What's good? What's happening? It is your girl. <laughs> Kayla, sometimes known as Marissa, definitely have the last name Fernandez, but used to be known as Ortiz. There's a lot of names. I'm very Latina like that. <laughs> And I'm back with another episode of my knitting podcast for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I don't like to dilly dally. So let's get into it. Y'all are mad. I get it. I recognize that I have been gone for a very long time, but I do want you to know that I did suffer in the meantime. Really, I actually suffered probably five minutes of sitting down and actually hitting the record button. Number one, I tried to eat stale candy corn. Pro tip, don't do that. I thought I was gonna break a tooth. Girl, I literally had to spit it out and to put it in the trash. Already started off great. Then I put more mascara on and had not just like a little bit of the mascara get in my eye. Like when you have like a huge clump of it get in your eye, I literally said the words out loud. This is how I meet my maker. This is how I die. But I'm here, we made it, we made it, we did it. So number one, let's talk about why I've been away and I'm gonna skim through this really fast because nobody really cares, right? Okay, the last time I recorded was at the very, very start of January. Since January, my house just has been, <laughs> 2023 said, ma'am, we about to get all these illnesses out the way. You have 31 days to be exposed to every single illness that you think might be available to you and I'd like for you to do it subsequently in a row. <laughs> My husband came home, wasn't feeling too great, thought he had a stomach bug. He gave me the stomach bug. He was just fine the next day. I continued to suffer for three days. Then the stomach bug, I don't know if my immunity was down or whatever, that stomach bug then turned into COVID. I was no good to anybody. I have four kids and a husband. We were all trying to like quarantine and whatever, isolate. So that was that week. Then my children the following week brought home another cold. Then my children the following week brought home another stomach bug. Then my husband caught COVID separately. It's been a lot y'all. Upsides of that. I've been gone for so long that I have about, there's a song reference in there somewhere. that I have about 40 million projects to show y'all and definitely lots of acquisitions because there is so much, I'm splitting it up. So today we are only talking about things that I have either finished or cast on since that moment in time and only some of the things. Number one, I made progress in some of my whips, so y'all will be proud. In less exciting news, I cast a lot of things on that maybe I shouldn't have. And number three, I have plans for more things to cast on, so I feel like at least I am consistent. <laughs> There's more mascara on my hand. Ah! Okay, let's get started. The first project is not necessarily one that I'm super proud of per se, but I am happy to have it off my needles. So happy. So this first one is this very cute hat. I made up this pattern. I was actually wearing it earlier, but I decided to take it off so that you guys could see it. This is a top down twisted rib, fully twisted rib. So twisted knits and twisted pearls. Girl, I also don't know why would I do that to myself? Why? But I did, it's real cute. I wanted to do a top down hat specifically because I wanted to really figure out what the depth of hat that I like actually is. I do like how it sits on my head. Let me see if I can put it on for y'all. It's very cute. I love like the little height at the top. The situation is cute. I do want to like re-block her and give her a little more oomph in the sides. I don't know why I like that so much, but she cute though. She's adorable. I really like her. Sorry, I'm looking at myself in the mirror to make sure I don't look like an idiot in the words of the Florida panhandle that I come from. <laughs> She's adorable. So this is, this is all the yarn that I have left over from the project. I knit this in Wandering Phlox. I think it's her super fine merino worsted base in peach pop. So that is the majority of the color that you see, that super light coral. Then I held that with Magpie Fibers Plume, which is 75% cashmere and 25% lace. Disclaimer, I work for them. I try not to talk about work when I can on this channel but inevitably it happens. That is this guy right here. It is so soft and so squishy, which is great because I have, I have thoughts about this type of base and other bases that I've been using, but we'll get to that later. We'll get, we'll get, we're gonna get there, girl. There's many things to talk about. So this is super soft. It added like a little layer of coziness. I would say that holding a lace weight 
with a worsted weight, you need to consider how much thicker that yarn is that you're holding with a lace weight when you consider how much fluff you're gonna get like in proportion between the two. Hold on, I'm gonna make it make sense. Normally when you have a pattern that calls for holding something lace weight with something else, it's normally holding like a lace weight mohair together with a fingering weight something, right? So in terms of step in size of the, the size of strand you're looking at, it's only one step up. They're very, very close in the diameter of strand that you're looking at. When you're holding a lace weight with worsted, the effect that that halo gives is going to decrease as that yarn gets bigger and bigger and bigger that's your main that you're holding with the lace weight i always like to like point that out to people because i have a lot of people come and ask me questions about like holding this with that or holding that with this part of my job and i always like to point out that whatever the effect is that you're trying to achieve make sure that you're considering what weight of yarn you're using because like for this project as you can see the halo is super super subtle like almost non-existent and really actually just gives my yarn more dimension i think but not necessarily not necessarily like a poof i guess what i'm trying to say is that when you're holding a lace weight with a worsted weight you're really just gaining something texturally and the feel and the warmth of that fiber and also you're gaining something potentially in the dimension of color and how you pair two colors together you're not necessarily going to gain a huge halo effect if that's what you want you want to hold a lace weight with something a lot lighter in order to have that halo really pop from the other strand of yarn. I think that I just said the same thing 47 times in the same like occlusive manner, but hopefully you got the vibes. I'm actually gonna leave this on cause it's real cute. And I'm gonna show you guys the next hat that I made. It actually is not blocked. If you know me, you know. It's actually like a little twisted, which is kind of cute. It's giving like ice cream scoop vibes. This hat here, this is the, oh girl, not you forgetting the whole name of the damn hat. This is the fireworks hat. This is by, Olga Baraya Kefelian. Girl, nailed it! Yes! Mm. So, <laughs> I loved this hat because it is super freaking squishy. Like, I hope you guys can get that, like, effect from it. Like, look how far it squishes down. Ugh! <laughs> this is a hat knit in double brioche, which if you've never knit double brioche, if you've ever knit single brioche and or fisherman's rib, girl, you can do it. It's very, very simple. There's very, very simple increases. This one is also knit from the top down. I actually was super excited about this one because she uses this very cool cast on. There's a couple of names for it, but I, the name that stuck with me is the disappearing cast on up here at the top. So if you are a crocheter, you'll be familiar with the magic circle. It is the same exact concept, but for knitting, and I love it. Boom, mine was blown with that. This was my first time knitting double brioche and my mind was blown with that because I was like, wow, this is super easy. And of course, like totally reversible, which I love. Oh girl, is that a mistake? Show is we gonna turn this back right side out and pretend we ain't never saw that. <laughs> And it just is so much fun to wear. I will say that it gives you a lot, a lot, a lot of warmth. There's so much air that's trapped in there because of a double brioche that it really gives you like really, really cozy vibes. You're creating a lot of fabric in between your head and the rest of the very cold world. I knit this up in Spin Cycle Yarns Dyed in the Wool and the collaboration yarn between Magpie Fibers and Spin Cycle Yarns, which is dyed in the skein, which is the solid color. This solid color is Juniper Rising and then the Spin Cycle color is Burning Sensation. If I'm not mistaken, I think all the dyed in the skein, skeins? There's got to be a better way to say that. I think they're all sold out now, um, but you could literally knit this in any yarn. I think you would get an amazing result with anything that's like a well-defined strand that also has a lot of bounce to it. I love knitting brioche with bouncy yarn. It just makes the whole process such a pleasure to knit as you get in that rhythm. I just, I just love that. So that's what I would recommend for this guy. I barely squeaked it in at the end for the test knit um, to show off. And this is actually going to the shop as a shop sample at the Magpie Fibers flagship store. Ooh, let's talk about a project that I finished that was in the whips video. Y'all are gonna be so proud. Bum, 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 bum. Hold on, wait, I don't have the 
front and back right. Bum, 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 bum. She has not one, but two sleeves. Is she blocks? No, mind your business. I'm so excited to get this guy off the needles. It felt like such a win to be able to get through not only the bobbles on this sleeve, but also the color work. And then feel like I got the bind off done and the bind off looks super clean because I did a tubular bind off on both sleeves. I actually, did I do a tubular bind off down here? I did. Low key pet peeve of mine, if there is not the same bind off and cast on for all of my bind off and cast on areas, like there is nothing that gives me the heebie jeebies more my whole body rejects that don't make me do it <laughs> and i am super super excited to block this guy now why is it not blocked yet you might be asking yourself it's been a while since we saw you so <laughs> about this sweater i would love to block it but first i have to fix a mistake and it is a mistake that is not necessarily easy to fix i'm a little bit mad about it but let's let's talk it through and reason it together. I finished this entire, entire sweater and then was pulling this out to take a picture of it. Hold on, let me make sure. And saw that. Just one stitch, just one, just one stitch that should be here and instead is here. So here's the plan. <laughs> we gonna we gonna keep this listen i already i got all my illnesses out of the way for 2023 so what you not gonna do is make me sick over this sweater plan is i still have plenty of yarn left i am going to try first to duplicate stitch if you've never done duplicate stitch before it's basically taking the yarn and almost like grafting it over top in the same pattern as you would a regular knit stitch and so you can almost kind of like draw over so i would draw over the brown stitch with the white yarn and then get another piece like a little thread of the brown yarn and thread that over as well in the spot that it's actually supposed to belong to my concern is that it's then going to make that fabric raised so we're going to try it but i don't want it to be like let's draw more attention to this mistake because of course that mistake is not on the back of the sweater where i could pretend that it doesn't exist it's on the front right here girl in my ribs like hey i fucked this up <laughs> uh that's option one that's option one the second option and i think the much scarier option is i could attempt to do some kind of surgery on it I don't really want to do that. I would actually have to turn the thing inside out, cut stuff out, weave in those ends, and then reweave a new strand in. And all of that doesn't feel super structurally sound to me for the sweater. And this is definitely like, I knit it in a hard wearing yarn because I wanted this sweater to last. This is Nest Sport in many colorways. So I'm not gonna name them all cause I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I'll put him in the down bar for you guys. <laughs> Sorry. It's 100% non-superwash Coriadale. So it is um, rustic-y feeling, but also feels like super durable. I really want this to feel like the integrity of the sweater is safe as I'm fixing this mistake. So if neither of those mistakes works, I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that that mistake is always gonna live there and I will just walk around parading my shame and or walk around only wearing this sweater with overalls boom they'll never know feeling like i'm team overalls today because i'm very distraught about what happened here <laughs> so that's that one it's going for a bath after we go through some solutions i'll probably put the solutions over on instagram like me trying them whether it's in my stories or in a reel or something so if you're not following me over there somewhere here on the screen is all the info that you need to follow me it's my name it's marissa made so I feel like we have to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it because I'm mad. Uh, but I also feel like choices are being made. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make the choices in tandem with y'all. Because I feel like, let, let's, 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 let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. So y'all know that I was knitting on my pressed flower shawl. And I love it. This is a pattern by Amy Christopher's, Christopher's, I don't know. And super squishy mosaic. I'm knitting it in Garthenor Priscelli, which I freaking love. It's a non-super wash yarn that is just, ooh. Wah. I was very excited about this knit. <sighs> In my wisdom. Oh, girl, not you dropping stitches. I cast on the pressed flowers shawl. I'm pretty sure that's the trash. Those breaks are terrible. Okay, I don't remember where I was at. So 
basically I didn't read <laughs> This pattern is originally knit in DK. I really wanted to knit this in fingering weight and I thought I would like the fingering weight feel of a shawl better than a DK weight shawl. It's just too much around my neck sometimes and I start to feel like non-consensually strangled. Not into it. So I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm just gonna do the math for myself and figure out how many times I'm supposed to repeat. Let me figure out how much yardage I would need. Da 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 da. We're at the point where I really need to figure out the math and I don't, want to <laughs> I don't want to and I know that I'm very far like I have done many repeats I don't want to do it I don't want to do it it doesn't the idea of doing that doesn't bring me joy I have a whole piece of mohair stuck to my face no thank you I don't want to participate you can put me on the bench coach as much like yuckiness as it gives me I actually think that I'm going to rip this out I know but here's the thing as i've been thinking this as i'm like oh girl amy i don't know if i can do this mrs uh miss christopher's christophers said don't worry about it girl i got you she released the pressed flowers cowl last week which i don't think i've ever shared this on here i actually prefer a cowl to a shawl and i like a two wrap i want it long and i want to flip it like an infinity cowl scarf thing and put it over my neck i want it to be like boom boom just strange considering the things that i just said about a choking situation shout out to the kink community <laughs> what i'm gonna do instead is rip this out and then knit the pressed flowers cowl instead she has three different sizes for that so i'm gonna knit the longest size and that is knit in sport weight so you will be seeing these colors again soon in a very different iteration i'm gonna try to spend maybe sunday ripping it out today is friday so maybe sunday i will spend some time ripping this out skeining them back up and figuring out with what time i'm gonna have to cast it on he <laughs> <laughs> the next thing let's talk about you guys know if you watched my winter knitting plans that the thing that I was the most excited to knit was the Guernsey Genser. It's a pattern by Stan Nisgarn. I did a whole thing, accidentally bought two different magazines. Like it was a whole debacle in every sense of the word. I finally cast it on in Plotulopi and uh, Rama Garn's mohair. I'm excited to show you guys, but I also, I have thoughts. So it is really beautiful. I'm so excited about the patterning. You're knitting the back and so it's actually coming down. This is the back piece coming down in this direction. And so I'm shaping for armholes right now. Um, and I'm just gonna zoom in, see more of the texture and those beautiful cables that are happening. I love them. There is also a problem with this one. So I've mentioned it here before. I am slowly as I'm getting older finding that I have more and more allergies to mohair. It never used to bother me before and all of a sudden it has become like it feels like a death trap. <laughs> I put it on my body and I just am counting down the minutes to get it off. Some people you actually like physically see an allergic reaction. It's not that. It's just sensory wise, I can't handle it. But I don't know that I would be okay knitting this type of pattern um, in an unspun yarn like Plotulopi um, without having a mohair held with it. Don't get me wrong. I think you could. But I don't know that the Plotulopi itself would have enough strength in the strand because it's so easy to pull apart to withstand all of this cabling that is in this sweater without that mohair added to it. So I don't know what to do. I was like knitting, knitting away on this before I got COVID. So I was like excited to show you guys this in my next podcast, like immediately. And I thought like, I'm gonna have the whole back piece to show them. My sensitivity has stepped up so much that it's actually making my hands prickle as I'm knitting with it. But now we're at a point that like, I'm feeling like I can't knit with it. I think it's just freaking me getting old. Today in old people news, it's affecting my knitting. Not pleased. I'm not sure what to do. So my options are I could rip it back and try to instead, number one, I just almost threw up in my mouth just thinking about trying to rip back this Plotulopi, but trying to remove all of the mohair. Oh, you know what I should say? I did knit a swatch with just Plotulopi plain stockinette because I thought maybe it was the Plotulopi first. That didn't give me any issues. Now, do I still feel like it's itchy? Yes. 
Do I feel like it's very, very rustic? Oh yes. But I don't think that it's the issue that I thought that it was. I'm not sure what to do. This guy is gonna go just on pause. You guys know how much I want this freaking sweater. But I just need to troubleshoot a solution for this, which might uh, make sense in terms of my next project that I'm gonna talk about. I have a couple of ideas that I'm working through. This is a no-go for today which makes me very sad because I want to wear this right now. I will wear this in the dead heat of summer if I have to because I wanted this pattern so bad. Blech. Now, let's let's turn this around. Let's talk about some wins, girl, because I need I need to talk about some wins. Things that I can knit with and that I can wear. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, girl, she looks so good with this hat too. <laughs> I cast on, which side is the front side, girl? Do you even know? <laughs> I cast on the Hellia sweater by Joanna Ong. I will put her name on the screen. This is a joy and a delight to knit. I knew that I wanted the finished product of this sweater. I did not know that I was going to enjoy the actual knitting process of it so much. And I am incredibly grateful for that this has been like my joyful let's get through all these illnesses color brings me joy pattern brings me joy the yarn brings me joy like it's just so much happiness wrapped up into a project and i think that just as a pro tip for anybody else like when you find a project like that like really slow down and take your time and enjoy every single moment of it because there is something so incredibly special about when you find a project that when you're talking about it, like you, like me right now, like you can't help but smile about it. You have to hold on to those feelings because I wish every single project was like this, that you feel like the yarn and the pattern and that everything just lines up perfectly. It's not, right? Like sometimes we gotta fiddle a little bit. Sometimes we gotta change some things. Sometimes we're thinking about, oh, and the next time I would modify this, not this one. Not this one for me. This one is like, I would knit 47 versions of this and every single one of them would be worth it. So what I love about this pattern, it has the most beautiful statement cabled sleeves. They are gorgeous. Has this beautiful folded over collar, which I love. It just looks super professional. There's even like a twisted rib detailing that runs down the side. And then there's like a split hem at the bottom. Ah, so good. <laughs> so I have the sleeves to go, which will be the biggest slog on this project, to be honest, because the sleeves from here on out are fully cabled all the way down. So I will be cabling from here till kingdom come, baby. You can find me in 2024 cabling, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I cast this one on for the bougie sweatshirt, Cal. Is it the bougie, bougie sweatshirt or the bougie sweater? I don't know. Casey, if you're watching, correct me down in the comments and I'll pin your comments. It's the bougie cow, girl. And it is being hosted by Young Folk Knits, who is my boo. Casey, you know I love you, girl. <laughs> and so I cast this one on for that cow in specific. I don't know that I'm gonna finish in time, but I'm okay with that. I am so grateful for her for hosting this cow and like helping me to find a project that is bringing me so much joy. Just, ah. So let's talk about the yarn. Do I have balls of it here? No, I don't. But, um, so this is La Monacomo, um, which is an Italian brand. It is a DK weight yarn. It's like 25 grams for a DK weight yarn. It is the softest thing that you've ever felt in your life. It's so incredible. It's so light and airy. If you are one of those people that you have sensory issues that you feel like garments weigh down too heavily on you, La Mana is an excellent choice i will link it below girl don't worry i got you in the down bar wait until this video is done to click on all the links though girl don't be ruining my little um analytics for youtube in this algorithm you know that it's a struggle already and as a matter of fact why are we talking about this if you're still here and you like the vibes i'd appreciate it if you hit that boop button down there and subscribed it doesn't really cost you anything helps me out with the algorithm also I'm not gonna lie. I really like building this community with y'all that it's just like, we are here to have a good time. So let's do that together. <laughs> also, if you have two seconds, please like and comment as well. Thanks. This is in La Monacomo and that's our DK weight. And then I'm holding it double with um, Farmer's Daughter Fibers, their Surrey Alpaca base in the color Juniper. Lovely. Like I'm talking about that sensitivity with mohair. Definitely not feeling that at all with Surrey Alpaca. So I think I'm gonna have to start making the switch when I really want that halo-y effect. 
to Surrey. So that's kind of my thoughts right now is I might try to look for a brushed alpaca for my Guernsey Genser to see if that fits better with what my needs are for that project. I will probably pick up the sleeves maybe this week. I don't know. I got a rough <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I have a very busy week up ahead <laughs> as far as work goes. So I might not have time to really focus and dedicate my time over to a fully cabled sleeve situation. So I very much so want to give it. But I don't know, we'll see. I'm so motivated to knit this project that it might be exactly what my brain needs. Who knows? Actually, this is the second project I think that is sparking so much joy. If you watch the lives or whatever when I'm at work um, for Magpie Fibers, you probably already saw this. So this beauty, <laughs> I love it so much. On the right side or the wrong side? Girl, I'm not you showing the wrong side. This beauty is the Harai scarf. I will put it on the screen. It is so lovely. I am so happy I cast this on. I cast this on in that same base that I mentioned earlier, which is the plume base. Oh, I am. There is like a yarn apocalypse happening down here on this couch next to me. One moment. I cast this on in two skeins of the plume, which is that cashmere silk lace weight base. And so the Harai scarf is a free pattern. I'll link it down below. It is very much so like, here's the stitch pattern. This is how you could use it. The world is your oyster. <laughs> so I kind of took that and ran with it. I cast on however many stitches I wanted to. It has this really beautiful, lovely texture. I'm gonna close up on it so you can see it. Beautiful, lovely texture. I am so so excited to see what it does when it blocks and I'm very ready to like no joke I'm right I'm ready to block the shit out of it <laughs> I want to make it super big super long super wide I am just going to knit until this is done which I think is so easy it's a four row repeat so I don't ever have to think about what I'm doing I don't even really have to memorize it I just have to memorize what two rows of the repeat is and then make sure I shift over because they like do do with this oh it's so great and i'm super excited for the idea of like a really cute wrap like this in the spring like a oof a woo situation girl he was extra but just like a ah uh, you know just giving a little like grace kelly very type of vibes you know <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I gotta stop. Highly, highly, highly recommend this pattern. I had to use two skeins of plume because the yardage is a little short. Um, so my my scarf, because I'm gonna knit to the end, is gonna be a lot longer than what she like projects the size to be. But I think I'm about like half, well, no, I'm like about a quarter of a way through my skeins and this is how long I have already, like unblocked. That's great. I would say if you have like a one skeiner or if you have like extra yarn left over that's fairly close, like 75% of a skein of mohair, of surrey alpaca, of whatever. Like you need something that's lace weight and very fluffy um, to give you this kind of effect that this has because it's gonna fill in those little gaps in your lace. I think this is an excellent, excellent stash buster project. Approved by me. How many minutes are we at? Wow. <laughs> I think that is all I have for you guys today. I will be back again. Probably the next time I see you, we're gonna talk about acquisitions and also while we do a little ask me anything situation. So I have questions already from Instagram. If you have questions for me that you are dying to know, cause everybody always does. Cause they're like, you work for a hand dyed yarn company. Tell me more about that. <laughs> You're welcome to leave them down below in the comments and I will take them under advisement for that video. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go fix these sweaters. But if nobody's told you today, this is just a reminder that your making is art and don't let nobody tell you different. Or you can send them to me and I'll take care of that for you. Bye y'all. <laughs>